Look at any industry and you'll see that people and processes make the difference. That's opposed to technology. Companies that leapfrog into success because of technological innovation can't sustain success without operational effectiveness. That's because technology actually is the easiest part of a system to understand and, in competitive industries, to copy. At the election office, we're told by outsiders that workers are sometimes uncomfortable with new technology. Now, that might be the case for some of you, but our experience has been that any new technological change is adopted pretty easily. Plus, Johnson County has had voting machines of some type since the late 1960s. You'd have to go back to the Lyndon Johnson era for the last presidential election where Johnson Countyans voted completely on paper. In the business world, it may be easy to copy the technology, but the human factor is difficult to copy. In elections, our emphasis on the human factors is the key to us being exceptional in the way we serve voters. New technology will continually emerge, which we'll need to understand, but the processes are central to us being excellent. You see, 95% of all voters are processed in the same way. We call them perfect voters. Everyone in Johnson County is perfect. We all know that. But perfect voters means that everything went the way it was supposed to. The voter comes in, announces his or her name and address, shows photo ID, signs the poll book, is set up to vote, the correct ballot is pulled, the voter casts his or her ballot, and receives an I voted sticker when leaving the polling place. Perfect voter. To have a perfect election, though, we need to master the other 5%, the exceptions. And that's what we're going to talk about here. For the most part, exceptions are covered with provisional ballots. A provisional ballot is issued when there is a question about a voter's eligibility at that moment for the election. So the voter is able to cast a ballot on paper, and the eligibility of the voter is researched back at the election office. State law determines if a provisional ballot can be counted, and those that are found to be lawful are recommended to be counted to the Board of County Canvassers when the board meets to certify the election results the following week. Because law determines if the ballots can count, it doesn't matter if the results from this ballot impact the outcome of the election. Lawful provisional ballots are counted whether the difference in a race is one or one million. But because provisional ballots are added in after election night, in close races, these provisional ballots can cause the outcome of a race to flip. So provisional ballots is one of those phrases that sounds different in context. Provisional ballots issued to protect voters' rights sounds good. Provisional ballots that cause a change in the outcome sound dirty. Therefore, when we talk about exceptions, our primary goal is to protect voters first and foremost but issue a provisional ballot only when necessary. For instance, if a voter comes in to the wrong polling place, we want to get the voter to the correct polling place. That might avoid a provisional ballot. The voter can vote provisionally at your polling place, but only the common races will be able to be counted if the voter is determined to be eligible. The votes for governor or United States senator, for instance, may apply to all and be counted, but the local candidates may not be the ones where the voter is registered and those races wouldn't be able to be counted. In summary, then, a provisional ballot issued to protect a voter's rights is good. A provisional ballot issue that could have been avoided by better understanding the issue is bad. Our training manual shows the methods we use for processing perfect voters. In order to be a perfect voter, the voter must be able to sign the poll book. That means the voter is in your poll book and has shown photo ID. The voter signs the book and an election worker prepares a card for the voting machine that contains the voter's specific ballot style. This card doesn't include any voter information or contain any results of ballots cast. The card can only be used once before being encoded again. It's important to verify that the ballot style, what we call the precinct part, matches the receipt prepared by the election worker when encoding the card and as another double check after inserting the card into the voting machine for the voter. The yellow copy of the voter receipt stays with the worker at the encoder, while the white copy goes with the white voter card to the voting machine. The machine attendant confirms that the precinct part on the voting machine matches the receipt, 
and puts the receipt in the envelope next to the machine. The training manual has a page that illustrates the categories of voters who can vote on machines as perfect voters, or must vote on paper with a provisional ballot. When someone casts a provisional ballot, they are issued a white envelope that must be completed in its entirety. Two election workers sign the envelope, and it's important that the voter completes all information. This information mirrors that of a voter registration form so that if there is an eligibility issue that keeps the ballot from being counted, the voter is in process to be registered for the next election. The shame would be if the voter's ballot should count by law, but can't because he or she didn't complete the envelope or because two election workers didn't sign the envelope. Instead of signing the poll book, the voter signs the green signature sheet and deposits the envelope in the red ballot bag. If the voter's name was in the poll book, but the voter cast a provisional ballot, mark a P on the voter's line in the poll book. For instance, you might have a voter carry in an advance ballot, hoping to leave it with you. The voter either needs to deliver that ballot to the election office by 7 p.m., or you can void the envelope, put it in the red bag, and issue the voter a provisional ballot. Voters who have been issued an advance ballot have the word advance next to their name in the poll book. This doesn't mean that the voter voted in advance by mail or in person, but it does mean that they applied for an advance ballot by mail or in person. They may not remember. They may never have received the ballot, or they may have the ballot with them. Regardless, they can't sign the poll book. They must vote provisionally. If you see the word advance in the poll book, that is a one-way ticket to the provisional ballot table. Again, all perfect voters sign the poll book. All voters casting a paper ballot sign the green sheet. I say it this way because occasionally you will have a voter request to vote on paper. We have a streamlined process for these voters. We call them gold voters. That's because their ballot goes in a different envelope and gold voters sounds much more prestigious than Manila voters. First, if a voter asks for paper, the voter must be able to sign the poll book and be a perfect voter. If not, it was the voter's lucky day because the voter was going to be issued a provisional ballot and vote on paper anyway. For these perfect gold voters, the person at the registration desk creates a two-part voter receipt, just as if the voter would vote on a machine. But instead, that two-part slip is dropped in the red ballot bag. The voter also signs the green sheet because remember, anyone voting on paper signs the green sheet. So in this case, the voter signs the poll book as a perfect voter and the green sheet as a paper voter. Because the gold envelopes ask for less information, it's important that the voter be perfect. If in doubt, better you have the voter who asks for paper complete a provisional ballot than a gold envelope. That's because we know we'll capture enough information on the provisional envelope to count the ballot if the law would allow it. The worst situation would be for a voter to request paper, use a gold envelope, leave the polling place thinking his or her vote was 100% going to count, and yet we determined later that the election worker should have issued the voter a provisional ballot. As a recap, a perfect voter signs the poll book. A provisional voter completes a white envelope. And a perfect paper requester uses a gold envelope. Understanding the scenarios that lead to provisional ballots is the hardest thing for an election worker to learn. The manual grows each election, in fact, bigger and bigger. Please read through your manual before the election. There's so much to learn, in fact, that it's common to hear election administrators say there is no such thing as a perfect election. Indeed, we rely on hundreds of election workers and process tens of thousands of voters on election day. There is a human factor and mistakes can happen. But our goal is a perfect election. In fact, we want a string of perfect elections, an election winning streak remembered for zero defects. Think about it. It's always worth the extra effort to be excellent. If a baseball player hits 270, he's a good player and will make a lot of money. If he hits 300 in his career, 
he'll go to the Hall of Fame. That's just a little more than 10% improvement, but it makes him legendary. Providing excellent service is an art. Making the effort to master the processes is what distinguishes Johnson County's election office as one of the most respected jurisdictions in the country. Thank you for joining this crusade and for putting in the commitment to be legendary.